Hello everybody, welcome to another Python tutorial video and in this one we're going to create a Python Sudoku solver from scratch and the way we're going to do it is the first minute or two of this video would be focused on what are the steps that we take as humans when it comes to solving a Sudoku puzzle. We're going to define those steps and then we're going to write the Python code that does those steps for us. So Python being a powerful programming language would allow us to solve these puzzles very quickly, but we need to provide the logic for it. So what I have on the screen is a Sudoku puzzle. As you can see, it's from sudoku.com. And I'm just going to use this one as just an example when we're writing the code and I'll refer back to it. Um, but basically what we do as humans is we have an ability to scan the, the Sudoku puzzle to see some patterns of which numbers are repeating more or less and that's more difficult to provide maybe to python um, at least we're not going to do that in this tutorial but when we find a field that we would like to solve so let's take a look at this particular field right so it's just the first one that's available starting from top to bottom um, let's say that the number that we want is number four so how do we check is that a possible solution well we check this rows and what we are thinking is, does the number four appear in the row? And if it already appears, then that's not our solution. Then we check the columns. And then the last part is we check, does the number four appear in the square? So basically there are three steps, three main steps when it comes to finding possible solutions. And that's what we're going to start with. So let's define what's possible. And in order to do that, basically what we need is, to know the row, the column, and the number that we're checking. So if we know what is the row, what is the column that we're checking, and then we know what the number it is that we're checking for, then we can run this function to, to figure that out. So there are three checks that we do. Is the number appearing in the given row? Right, that's the first one. Then is the number appearing in the given column? And let's say, is it appearing in the given square? And if the answer to all of these three is no, then that is a possible solution to that given field. So in this script, as you can see, it starts with um, importing NumPy, mainly for printing it as, as a grid. But we have this grid, which is a list of lists. And every list within the list represents a row of the Sudoku. So this is the first row of the puzzle that we have this is the second one and so on so what we need to do is we need to iterate through these rows and columns of course depends on what it is that we're searching for so the first step is we need to set global grid what this allows us to do is we are going to use this grid which is outside of the function when we're working in the function when we're running the function so the first question is is the number that whatever number that we have in in, in the mind is it uh, appearing in a given row. So let's do this. For i in range 0 to 9, so that is the number of rows that we have, uh, if grid, and also columns of course, if grid row i is equal equal to number, then return false. So let's say that this row that we've selected in the first place is row 0, 1, 2. So let's say it's row two. Well, what we do is we go from zero to nine within that row or within that list. And we try to find out is any of those numbers equal to the number that we're guessing or we're checking if it's, is it a possible solution to that field? If any of those is indeed the number, then we return false. So that number already exists within that row. And I hope this is clear, but if, if it's not clear, just let me know in the comments below. Now, the second question is, well, let's say that this test has passed. We don't have the number in a given row. Well, now we need to check, is it appearing in the column? Well, for i in range 0 to 9, we have the same amount of columns. If grid, now keep in mind that we're checking for column and not for row. So we have row and then column. But now when we're iterating, we're going to do the opposite way. So first we have I and then column. And if that is equal to the number, then we're going to return false. 
So let's say that this column is three. So the column is zero, one, two, three. Right, so that is our column. Well, grid i, i is taking the value of zero to nine, which means it's changing from the first zero list first and so on. But this column remains the same one. So we are continuing, we're scanning down from the first row to the last one. And again, if we at any point find the number appearing in, the, in that column, we are going to return false uh, because, well, it's not one of the possible solutions. It's, it's already appearing there, right? And that's, that's the logic that we have. And the last one, which is a bit more tricky is, is the number appearing in given square? So how do we check if the number one or two or whatever number is appearing in this square? First, what we're going to do is we're going to use, um, we're going to divide whatever row or column is by three, but we're going to round it down to the closest um, number. So let me comment this part out. Maybe just to quickly to, to explain this part because I think that's a, it's, it's very important to know that. So let's take a look at rows 0, 1 and 2. The function that we're going to use is this one. So we're going to use the division symbol twice and what it does is it divides it and then rounds it down. So if it's row 0, if we divide it with 3, the answer is 0. If we take a look at the first or row number one or row, one, row number two, it all provides zero. So uh, if we divide the first three rows right, and, and we round it down, so we, we, we divide it by three and we round it down, it always gives zero. Then if we move to four, to, so this is row three, four, and five. So three, four, and five, it all comes down to one. So as you can see, if we create these, um, let's say sections of the Sudoku, this would be the section zero, section one, and section two. And this is important for one reason, because later on we can access these sections and iterate through the rows within that section. But how do we do that? Well, this is row, uh, this is the section zero, right? So section zero, we would like to start at row zero, but this section one, well, we don't want it to start at row one. We want it to start at row zero, one, two, three, right? So it's, this is, we want to start the, the zero section from row zero, the first section from row three and the last one from row six. So what we need to do is we need to multiply these by three. And what we get is the starting point of these squares. So it would be zero, three, and six. So let's take a look at this one. So this is row seven, right? So zero to seven, seven divided by three and then round down. And then if we multiply by three, we get six. If we do the same with eight, we get again six. So we have this one being section zero or starting from row zero, this one being section three or starting from row three, and this one being section, um, let's say starting from row six. So what we're going to do is we have the starting points of the three sections. So let's start with that. Um, let's do it this way. Maybe it's good to have X zero being equal to the column divided and rounded down by three, multiplied by three. And if this doesn't make sense, uh, follow the video a bit longer. And I think it would make a lot of sense when we, when we finish this, um, this part of, of our code. And we're going to do the same for the row. So we know that regardless of, um, what we, which rows or columns we pass here, the outcome would be zero, three, or six zero, three, or six. So row or column doesn't matter. It will always be zero, three, or six, which is the starting point of our squares. Well, now what we're going to do is for i in range zero to three, we know that every square has three rows, right? And every square has three columns. 
So we are creating, we are looping through all three rows and three columns because we already know the starting position and we're only moving uh, down or to the right. If grid, now here what we're going to do is, um, let's start with y0 plus i. So this one y0 is, as we said, the starting point of our square and x0 plus j equal equal to number then we're going to return false so what this part does is basically it knows the starting position and then within these two for loops it it starts so let's say that this one was six right six plus zero so row six six plus one row seven six plus two is row uh, eight so those are the three rows that would be covered and which makes sense right so um, we have x0 or y0 being the starting position and then we move depends on which uh, it's, it's always two rows below or two columns to the right and then if the number is within those nine possible combinations then we would like to return false because well that is not a possible solution to our um, so it's not a possible the number that we have chosen is not possible for that particular field but if none of that is the case, so let's say we've tried these three, it doesn't return false, well, we would like to return true. So that is, it means that um, that number is uh, is possible one for the given row column selection. Well, now this, the last part is we know how we have set this part up, but we need to instruct Python to loop through this um, grid. We need to, we need Python to loop through this Sudoku and to fill these empty lines, right? So empty fields. Now, the way that it works, uh, it covers recursion or backtracking, is Python starts from the top. So the first row, and it runs this um, possible function. So is it possible? So we start with this field and we start from one to nine. Is one possible? Well, it's not possible. We can see it in the column. Is two possible? No. Is three possible? No. Is four possible? Yes. Perfect. Then it goes to the next one. Here. Is one possible? No. Is two possible? Yes. All right. Now, this website provides information that if a given number that you've selected is incorrect, as you can see, it's marked in red. However, based on what we've programmed so far, we would not be able to know that that is not a correct um number for that field because there are more than one possible uh, outcome. So how do we solve that? Well, Python at this stage doesn't know that that's not the right solution. So it continues with the next field. So it starts again. Is one possible? Absolutely. Let's keep it there. Then moves to the next one. Is one possible? No. Two, three, four, five, all six, also not possible. Seven, not possible. Eight, also not possible. Nine, also not possible. So what is the solution? Well, what we're working on doesn't work. Let's go one step back. So it goes to the one that we know that is correct, but Python doesn't. So it tries to find another solution. Can we use any other number? So two, we can't, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We can't use that. All right, we go one more step back. So this two that we initially had seems that it's not the right one. So let's continue with that one. So three, four, five, we can't use six. Can we use six? No, seven. So we can only use eight. Now, as you can see in this case, it's, it's the correct one and we continue with the next one. And this is basically how Python would go through it. So it would start with the top, continue until it's possible to solve. If it's not possible, it goes back and kind of tries again with the next possible uh, solution and this is although it might seem ridiculous to you because we don't do that as, as human but um, it is there the combination are a lot less compared to if you have all the possible uh, nine by nine so it's 81 squares and all combinations of these non nine numbers because that's a huge number so um, although this might seem ridiculous to you it is quite a fast way because um, of this backtracking um, and, and Python can recognize, of course, based on our function, which are the possible numbers, which are not, and it eliminates a lot. 
So now the next part that we need to code is solving the Sudoku based on our possible function. So first we're going to have grid global grid, so the same one that we worked at the beginning. And now we need to do a few things. First, for row in range 0 to 9, and for column in range 0 to 9. What we do is, first we need to check, is a given field empty one? Because if it's not empty, if there's already number, because the example that we have, for example, here we have number 5. We don't want to check if it's possible any number there because it's already filled in. So what we do is if grid bow column is equal equal to zero, so zeros are the, the ones that we've marked as empty fields. So if it is zero, then what we want to do is we need to check for number in range one to 10. So when we're solving Sudoku, it starts with one, it goes all the way, but doesn't include number 10. So one and up to nine. And then what we want to do is we need to check if possible. And we already know from our functions, we need to take row, column, and number. So let's say that it is possible. Well, if it is possible, our grid row column, we're going to set that to be equal to number and continue solving, right? So this is actually, we're going to include that function as part of our function as well. But if it's stuck, if it, if it cannot move, then grid row column, we need to set it back to zero, right? And then what we can do is um, we can return and maybe what I had here as printing the, mat the matrix one, well, let's say that it would be a sold one. We would like to print it here. And maybe one more thing that we can do is um, we can, let's make it as an input, more possible solutions. Oftentimes, if you have, of course, the, the less numbers you have known as part of a Sudoku, the more possible solutions there are. So if you have, in this case, we have quite a lot of numbers, a lot of zeros, a lot of empty fields. So maybe we have more than one solution. And if that's the case, we would like to see that second or third solution. And let's see if we run this solve function. Let me click, quickly see through the code, but it seems that it makes sense. So let's run this and see if we get some outcome. All right, so let's compare it with the first one. So here is one possible solution. Let's see if there are more possible solutions. If we just click enter, there's another one. And that's it. So for this one, we have two solutions, two possible solutions. Um, Let's take a look at the differences. So for example, um, here we have 719, here we have 179. So basically if I have, if I fix this one in our initial grid to be one, it should provide us with only one solution because that other one is already gone. So let's, but let's quickly take a look into that. So this is the first one. That's it. So there, there, there are not, uh, there is no other solution. But if you select more zeros, so let's say that this we have a zero, this one we have a zero. Let's see if we have more than so two. No, we still have two. So we need to have even more empty fields to, to get more solutions. So just a, a quick recap. The, the, the logic behind is this. First, we make checks on what is possible. So is the number appearing in a given row? If it is appearing, return false. If it's appearing in a given column, also return false. And if it's appearing in a given square, also return false. So that, those are the checks that we do as well as humans. And then this part is the part that I explained um, a bit earlier, which is going from left to right. So for every row, for, then for every column, for every combination that is zero, it tries the number. So this is, this is what I explained earlier that when it's stuck, it goes back. This is this part of the code. Um, and I hope this is clear, but if it's not, just please let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for following as always.